Welcome to part 2 of our rewrite of the Naruto series, a series of videos where I rewrite Naruto in chronological order, making changes that I think would have improved the series for my personal taste. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the future videos in this series. This is only part 2 and the series will probably have dozens of videos, so yeah, definitely subscribe and also like the video to help the series reach more people. Let's aim for 200 likes in this video, come on! If everyone who's watching right now presses like, we'll easily go way beyond that, and it takes two seconds, let's go! Alright, let me begin this part of the rewrite by mentioning something I forgot in part one. It's not something that interferes in the plot in any way, but something I am changing for the whole series for the sake of things making more sense, and that is the substitution jutsu. This jutsu has to go away, we're simply deleting it. Let's not have a jutsu that allows you to evade any attack with just low level ninjutsu. And by the substitution jutsu, I mean the type you can switch positions with a piece of wood or a rock, the one Kakashi used a lot in the first arc of the series. Assume that every time someone uses a substitution jutsu in the original, they use a genjutsu instead in the rewrite. And as it was mostly Kakashi using substitution anyway during the bell test, and then during the fight against the Mist Brothers, there's no problem really because Kakashi would know several genjutsus. However, other specific types of substitution like Gara Sand substitution, Orochimaru's skin change, and Killer B's tentacle swap will remain as they are specialized jutsu, and I think they are worth the inclusion. But whenever these jutsus show up, it will be specified that they spend a whole lot of chakra for the sake of power balance because they are very strong. Now let's Let's get on with the story. Our heroes just returned from the land of waves having succeeded in a very difficult mission that was way above the pay grade of Ginnans. A rank missions are usually given to very experienced Junins and Jonins, so this definitely gets the people in the village talking about Team 7, a team of Ginning rookies that succeeded in an A rank mission. People really speculate about Sasuke's talents, saying that he is an Uchiha prodigy, but most most people just assume Kakashi carried the entire mission. Also, people start judging Naruto and saying he is essentially leeching his team, getting all the glory and doing nothing as their team sweat for him. They assume that as he is a demon, he cannot be good for anything, so he is not really contributing for his team. It's not only the commoners who think that, many ninjas, including higher rank ones, think so as well, as they know Naruto did terribly in the ninja Academy. Naruto obviously gets pissed by that, and we get a scene of Naruto saying he faced two Jonin level fighters, but of course, no one believes him as he screams to a crowd of Chunins and Jonins walking around Konoha that were mocking him. After that happens, we can add a scene of Sasuke telling Naruto that trying to convince people is not worth his time and that he should just be training. Kakashi also tells Naruto if people in the village actually knowing what happened would make Naruto feel better, or if saving the people from the land of waves wasn't the reward in itself. Naruto sees the logic in that argument and that the people being okay in the land of waves is much more important than Naruto's own glory, and reluctantly agrees to their points, saying he doesn't need the people to know he made a difference and swallows his pride. Character development. After that, we'll get something I think we needed more of in part one, a Team 7 training scene. Scene. If you think about it, the only one we got was the tree climbing scene in the entire series for the whole Team 7 together, and Kakashi should have definitely trained them more in part 1, I think. This is a great scene for some exposition about how chakra works with more details, genjutsu, ninjutsu, all the chakra natures. It doesn't have to be in thorough detail, but have Kakashi explaining the basics to Team 7 and the audience as well. Kakashi will then train each of the Team 7 members in particular skills. Naruto's training consists of much more basic stuff like taijutsu combat. Naruto has a lot of stamina but his fundamentals are very sloppy. When Naruto complains about having basic training, Kakashi mentions their encounter with the Mist Brothers and how Sasuke outperformed Naruto in basic taijutsu, which fires Naruto up and he goes along with the training. Kakashi then teaches Sakura some basic 
specific types of genjutsu, because unlike the original, we are actually gonna pay off the promise that Sakura will eventually be good at genjutsu. She doesn't learn anything too advanced for now, just basic techniques, nothing like paralysis genjutsu or a genjutsu that completely alters the senses of the target, but she learns some illusions and stuff like that. We also see Sasuke watching Sakura training her genjutsu from afar with his Sharingan activated. This detail will be important later. Sasuke watching Sakura, hence he is at least mildly interested in her, so we can actually start developing their romance a little bit more. Finally, Kakashi trains Sasuke on his Sharingan. We have Kakashi explaining how the Sharingan works in more detail to Sasuke and to the audience as well. He explained about the precognition the Sharingan provides and also that Sasuke can copy abilities. But Kakashi says that you are physically unable to replicate an ability you won't be able to reproduce. For instance, if you can't use wind style, you won't be able to copy wind style jutsus and so on. And this applies even more so when you're talking about other Keke Gen guys. Kakashi then tells Sasuke to try and copy what he is going to do. Sasuke activates his Sharingan and stands ready. Kakashi then pulls out a paper bomb and throws it into the ground. The paper bomb begins to smoke, indicating it will explode soon. Naruto and Sakura get very spooked by it, telling Sasuke to get the hell out of there because it's going to explode, but Sasuke stares at it and looks at what Kakashi is about to do. Kakashi then weaves hand signs and performs a jutsu, touching the paper bomb who is about to explode. Ceiling symbols form over the paper coming out of Kakashi's hands and the smoke stops. Kakashi Kakashi says, this is a basic sealing jutsu. It can be used to seal latent chakra. This will be important later. Kakashi then explains the basics of sealing techniques and asks Sasuke, did you copy that? Sasuke says, yes. Kakashi then throws another paper bomb to the ground and says, then do it. As the paper bomb starts to smoke, Sasuke performs the same sealing jutsu, diffusing the paper. Sakura cheers and simps loudly as Naruto gets pretty jealous and says he could do it better if he had the time. Naruto then trying to impress Sakura after Sasuke's display of talent starts to perform some taijutsu combos just in the air without a target but accidentally kicks a rock and falls on his butt. A little comedy beat there. We can see with this scene Kakashi training Team 7 and that they're bonding and learning new things. All of them. Not only Sasuke, which makes the team itself feel more cohesive and intimate. However, this scene cuts back and forth with another more serious scene, and that scene is the introduction of Danzo Shimura. Yes, I am introducing Danzo very early on, as he is a very prominent antagonist in Shippuden, and it would be good to see him actually interact with Hiruzen when he was still alive. For this scene, we see the third Hokage organizing missions and teams, and he comments with one of his advisors that the Leaf Village is receiving a lot of mission requests from smaller nations around the Land of Fire and that they're very understaffed. They're running kind of low on manpower. But the Leaf Ninjas are overall doing a pretty good job on their missions, so they're still receiving a lot of them. We then see he looks at a scroll ordering a B rank mission, and you can see Hiruzen looks a little conflicted. Danzo then enters the room, and we get this feeling for his ominous, evil presence. He then says, Hiruzen, don't tell me you've grown foolish enough in your old age to send them in that mission. Hiruzen dismisses Danzo with a smile and says, Old friend, you know me, I believe in our shinobi, and the young generation carries the will of fire as much as any of us. This will of foolishness will get you killed one day. Foreshadowing. Hiruzen says, it might, but as long as it doesn't, I will choose to believe in them. Danzo says, do what you wish, but I cannot allow you to send the QB on that mission. Hiruzen for the first time is visibly angry at Danzo in this entire conversation, and also in the series as a whole. He never seemed to be angry when he talked to Naruto, even though Naruto was just screaming at him. And then Hiruzen says, Naruto is a shinobi of the Leaf Village, not an asset, and I will not 
not have you questioning my decisions any further. Last I checked, I was the Hokage. Danzu simply says, for now, and leaves the room. We cut back to Team 7 training, and Kakashi spots the hawk that flies over them whenever they are called to the Hokage's office. It appears we have a new mission, Kakashi says. As you may have guessed by the title of the video, we are not going straight to the tuning exams after the Land of Waves. I am actually making a whole new arc, and that's for a couple of reasons. First, we need to get a better feeling for how the life of a normal ninja goes in the Naruto world. In the original, the Land of Waves is the only normal mission we ever get to see our protagonist going on. The other missions are all very different from what common shinobis would usually go. We have the tuning exams, and then most of the missions after that involve the Akatsuki or Orochimaru or some very strange thing that most ninjas would never even dream of going. A more down-to-earth mission before the tuning exams will be very good for world building. Also, we are introducing Team Asuma and Team Kuranai in this arc as well, instead of doing so in the tuning exams. They're gonna be established characters by then. Don't get me wrong, the tuning exams is one of the best arcs in manga slash anime history, but it introduces dozens of new characters, and I think we can all agree that among the secondary characters, they focus primarily on Team Guy and the Sand siblings. You could argue Shikamaru and Shino get pretty decent focus in the tuning exams as well, but Lee, Neji, and Gara are really hyped up as the top Ganons in the tuning exams, and they are the focus, primarily. So I'll have a shot at developing Team Asuma and Team Kuranai here before the tuning exams, so we are more attached to them. Them. Also, I am putting those characters here because they literally have zero interactions with Sasuke in the entire series, most of them at least. Which is kind of an important character, you know Sasuke, second most important character of the series. If all members of the Sasuke rescue team have a more fleshed out relationship with him, it just makes for a more compelling story when they actually try to rescue him. Just think about it, Hinata and Shikamaru never said a single word to Sasuke. We are changing this here. Those two characters are too important not to interact with the second most important character in the show. We are also not going to have any Jonans assist the Genins in this arc, which makes the story more tense. Finally, our antagonists will be ninjas from the Stone Village, which is the only village we see nothing about in part one. We get to see something from all other major villages. Even the Cloud Village has a quick flashback scene in Neji's backstory. They're also other reasons for including a new arc here, but I'll get to them later. Also, subscribe to the channel if you didn't do so in the first time I asked. Okay, let's continue with the story now. Team 7 arrives in Hiruzen's office, and Naruto is all eager, saying, give me the toughest mission you got, old man, because I'll be the Hokage one day, and I'm not running away from any tough quests. Hiruzen says, you might like the one I have for you today then. But first, Kakashi, I have a different mission for you this time. Unfortunately, I'll have to split your team. Naruto is excited excited when he hears this because this is the first time Kakashi won't be supervising them for a mission. Sasuke thinks this is a strange move and questions Hiruzen's decision, and Sakura thinks now I only have to get rid of Naruto and Sasuke and I will be alone for the entire mission. We see Kakashi getting a scroll for an S rank mission, and he says it will be done, Hokage-sama. He then looks at Team 7 and says, and you three, behave. Kakashi leaves, and our three heroes are very excited about their new mission. At this moment, someone knocks. Hiruzen tells them to come in, and we see Team Asuma and Team Kuranai entering the room. Asuma and Kuranai themselves are not there, though, only their Ganons. We can see the atmosphere changing immediately as Sakura is completely bummed out that she won't be able to be alone with Sasuke. And we get the introductory scene of the six other Ganons here instead of the one we got in the tuning exams. You know, the one Naruto gives his opinion about about each of them. Sakura and Ino trade stares as usual, Hinata seems shy around Naruto, Shikamaru is just yawning, Choji is eating chips, Kiba is just being Kiba, I guess, and just provoking Naruto, and Shino's just chilling, making sure Choji doesn't stomp one of his bugs. Hiruzen says, alright, everyone is finally here, well, as our newest batch of ninjas, I thought to give you all a special mission, where you won't be accompanied by your senseis. All nine of you will be important. Sasuke questions why he would send nine Genins instead of a smaller but better trained team if the mission is difficult. Hiruzen then answers his
his thoughts by saying, The country of crystals asked for help of our village. By the way, I am making that country up in this rewrite. It's a very small nation that borders the land of fire and the land of earth. About here in the world map. Hirazum continues, their capital city went through a natural disaster, a huge landslide, and they requested the services of our ninjas to help with the damage control, taking mud and rocks out of the city as well as helping them rebuilding structures that were destroyed. That's why we need a lot of hands, and they don't necessarily have to be Jonins as you're not expected to fight anyone in this mission. This will obviously not be the case, however. Help the people in the country of crystals. This is a B rank mission, as it is in another nation, and I will be electing the captain for the nine of you, which you will obey his orders as if from your Jonin senseis. There's a pause as Naruto gets very eager. After the results of his last mission, he is certain he will be the team leader. Hiruzen says, Sasuke Uchiha will be your captain, so pay attention to his commands and follow his instructions. Naruto gets furious, screaming to the Hokage why Sasuke and not him. Hiruzen nonchalantly replies that Sasuke's mission results have been the best among all the rookies and that he shows great instinctive leadership according to Kakashi while Naruto is impulsive and hot-headed. Naruto gets pretty upset by hearing that but doesn't go any further. Sakura and Ino obviously idolize and simp over Sasuke for being chosen as their leader. Kiba says, well, I think I should be the leader but whatever. Shikamaru only says mendoksai while yawning and the others accept without much of a protest. Hiruzen says, you have the day to prepare for the mission, you're leaving tomorrow at 6 a.m. Shikamaru and Naruto are very disheartened upon hearing that, but nevertheless, all of them accept the mission. Hiruzen then gives Sasuke a book containing the profile of all ninjas in the squad, their data book stats and jutsus essentially, so Sasuke can get familiar with what everyone can do to give them proper orders based on his squad's abilities. I know Ganons are not supposed to lead squads, but I made a point point of Hiruzen saying they are very understaffed and that he doesn't expect any fights to happen in this mission, so he's gonna give Sasuke the team captain role here. He chooses Sasuke because he is the most talented of the bunch and he has good IQ and instincts for battle as well. People don't really know Shikamaru is a genius yet, so Hiruzen goes with Sasuke. It's also great to have Sasuke as the team leader because that will allow for some interesting interactions with Naruto. The morning arrives and Naruto is the only one who's late. Even Shikamaru gets there in time. Sasuke and Sakura scold him and we see Hinata saying good morning to Naruto but she speaks too quietly so Naruto doesn't understand. He turns towards her and says, wait, uh, what did you say? And she just says nothing because she's too shy and just gazes down to her feet. Now the Konoha 9 will have to travel until the country of crystals which will take a couple of days. This is a good time to have some good interactions, quick things to flesh out the characters. First we see the rivalry between Sakura and Ino as they dispute Sasuke's attention non-stop for Naruto's dismay. Shikamaru disapproves and thinks Ino is stupid by doing so, talking with Choji which establishes their friendship, and eventually Sasuke gets pissed and commands both Sakura and Ino to back off and not speak to him again unless he says so. Sasuke then tells Sakura he thought she would know better than to goof around during a serious mission. This implies that Sasuke had grown to appreciate Sakura as a ninja during their time together and thought she could be more professional during their missions. Sakura gets embarrassed and Naruto laughs at her. After that, we see Kiba provoking Naruto and just being an asshole, getting Naruto extremely pissed. Kiba didn't think much of Naruto before they fought each other in the tuning exams, so let's start building some tension between the two here. Hinata tries to intervene as they start arguing, but to no avail. Kiba provokes Naruto by saying he killed the fourth Hokage, one of the best ninjas the village has ever seen because he's a monster and he should not be in this mission as monsters are not trustworthy. Naruto gets pissed and he's gonna punch Kiba as Kiba also motions to punch him 
as well. Sasuke then, as they're about to punch each other, blitzes in front of them and holds both of their punches, one for each of his hands. Kind of like how Rock Lee will do to Sasuke himself later in the tuning exams. With his Sharingan activated, Sasuke says, Enough! Both of you. Naruto looks at Sasuke and says, You're not bossing me around. Keep up being a little wiser than Naruto. Let's go. And Sasuke releases his hand. But Naruto is really pissed at Kiba and also Sasuke for overshadowing all of his actions. So he attacks Sasuke in anger. Sasuke flawlessly defeats Naruto, immobilizing him in one fluid single motion using his Sharingan and says, Naruto, you will obey me. I am the captain here. As he pins Naruto to the ground. Shikamaru steps in and says, Naruto, listen to him. It's a drag, but we have to obey Sasuke. He's our team captain. Sakura looks pretty scared about this whole situation, but Naruto, seeing her very scared face and listening to Shikamaru, calms down. And so does she. This is the first of many times we'll see Naruto and Sasuke fighting. It is a very quick fight, and we see how far ahead of Naruto Sasuke is right now. Naruto also thinks that to himself, thinking that he got destroyed by Sasuke and he feels angry and ashamed by it. His anger is just boiling up as he's trying to contain himself. But Hinata kinda gets close to him and says, Calm down, Naruto. Kiba doesn't mean that. As she tries to apologize for Kiba, but Naruto says to Hinata, I'll show them. I'll show them and I'll be the greatest Hokage ever. We can visibly see that Hinata is sad by Naruto not acknowledging her very well and just kind of thinking for himself, but still. It's interesting to make at least one of the rookies have some sort of prejudice, just like the villagers have towards Naruto, so I'm doing that to Kiba. He's gonna be less likable here, but let's be honest, who actually likes Kiba? And it's good to build up tension for Naruto and Kiba's eventual fight. The Nine Ninjas get pretty quiet, for the rest of the trip, as what happened previously was pretty serious. We can also see Sasuke is pissed at Kiba for saying what he said to Naruto, but Sasuke keeps his cool, trying to move forward with the mission. After some days of traveling, the Konoha 9 arrive to the capital of the country of crystals. It is a sizable village, definitely not as large as Konoha, but by no means small, and it is in very bad shape as a landslide hit a large portion of the town. There is a serious amount of rocks and mud on the streets surrounding many buildings and structures that were very heavily damaged and the people from the village seem to be struggling a lot as well as we see their sadness and empty gazes. Many of them are injured as well. As the Konoha 9 walks into the village through one of the pathways that wasn't hit by the landslide, people start to whisper and of course our ninjas notice it. After many whispers, one villager points to Sasuke and says, He's the spawn of the devil! He carries the symbol of death! He's come here to finish us off! As she points to the Uchiha clan symbol that is displayed on the back of Sasuke's shirt. Sasuke and the other ninjas are very confused by that, but people in general get very scared of Sasuke especially. Kids? start running away from them. Some people even throw rocks at Sasuke, which he easily catches or dodges, but it's a strange situation. I think this is a good opportunity to put Sasuke in Naruto's shoes a little bit, so he can understand how Naruto feels as everyone in Konoha does similar things to him. Still, the squad doesn't understand why Sasuke is being treated like that, and neither does the audience. The Konoha 9 get an audience with the village elders, and they also seem to be wary of of Sasuke. They explain the landslide happened a week or so ago and need help to re-establish their city, as Hiruzen explained before. Shikamaru asked if a landslide like this had ever happened before and the elders tell him that it was the first time. Even though the village is close to a mountain range, no landslides had ever happened before. Sasuke then separates the team into different tasks, commanding some of them to collect the rocks and the mud, while others will help rebuilding the structures and tend to the wounded. As the team begins to scatter, an elder woman, who was the only one who didn't seem to be afraid of Sasuke, says, You should not go outside. People will fear you. Sasuke says, I have noticed. 
She says, I apologize for the way things are, but some people just can't let the past go. Sasuke nods and uses the transformation jutsu to turn into a commoner so people don't ostracize him. We now see the Konoha 9 using their ninjutsu not to fight, but to help the village. Choji enlarges his hand to remove large amounts of mud and rocks. Shino does the same thing with his bugs. Hinata looks for larger rocks and anyone lost in the mud with her Byakugan. Naruto uses shadow clones to help rebuild the city structures and so on. And this goes for a good three or four days, with a team just doing menial tasks, helping the village. And let's include a scene here where Sasuke sees Sakura tending to a wounded boy, putting some bandages on his arm, and then Sasuke sees this very brief flashback, throwing back to his mom, doing the same to him. This would literally be one panel in the manga. Sasuke reminisces about his mom in this scene, and starts to see Sakura as a woman like his mom was kind, helpful, and dependable. Developing romance, let's go, let's try to do that. Sasuke and Sakura. <laughs> We also see Naruto biting more than he can chew to one-up Sasuke while they're repairing the city, but it backfires as Naruto drops a ton of blocks of wood that he was trying to carry at the same time when he slips on the mud. And as Sasuke is using the transformation jutsu, we get a feeling the villagers are now very appreciative of the efforts of the Konoha team because they kind of give an excuse that Sasuke left as people didn't seem to like him, so he's not there anymore. We cut to a cave high up in the mountains that are next to the village. Three figures sit in that cave, lit by an oil lamp. We identify three ninjas from the stone village. Two male, one female. One of the guys says, come on, what's taking so long to ask the stone village to help? The landslide happened over a week ago. The other guy says, you tell me we've been handpicked by the Tsuchikage, but now we just have to sit here and wait. He then scoffs and says, well, I guess some of us were picked because of our skill, others because of favoritism. And he looks at this younger girl, about 15, and you would recognize her as a younger Kurotsuchi. She says, just because Tsuchi Kage is my granddad, it doesn't mean I lack in skill. She doesn't seem angry, but eager to prove them wrong. Bring Kurotsuchi in early on is an interesting way to develop the future Tsuchi Kage and also some of her connections to our main characters. And well, I think she is a decent enough character to have as an antagonist of an early arc. As Kurotsuchi finishes talking, a fourth stone ninja, a bearded man in his mid-fifties, enters the cave and says, Bad news, they didn't ask for help of a stone, they asked for help of a leaf. The two younger men seem exasperated, while Kurotsuchi seems excited. She asks, then we'll have to fight them, right? The older man says, yes. We'll have to make sure they go away, but we cannot reveal we're ninjas from the stone. They're just kids, shouldn't be a problem. The older man seems to be their squad leader as he commands the other three to go and persuade the ninjas from Konoha to leave. We cut back to Sasuke and he is asking around, while in his transformed form, why the villagers seem to hate that guy, the Uchiha guy who appeared before. He gets some generic responses such as, that symbol is a symbol symbol of the devil and bad luck, but nothing too concrete. Shikamaru then approaches Sasuke and says, So, I look closer at the rocks that came with the landslide. Some of them are very, very large, too large to be landslide rocks. They seem to have some flat sides too, as if they were cut. Sasuke looks up, alarmed, and says, Cut with chakra? Could be. Sasuke then quickly calls for the team to assemble. As they do so, he tells everyone, myself, Shikamaru, and Hinata will go investigate the mountain and the landslide, and tells the others to stay sharp and that there may be trouble but to carry on their activities as if nothing is happening. They get confused with that, but Sasuke, Shikamaru, and Hinata start to go up the mountain. Hinata scouting ahead with her Byakugan. They find a large section of rock, the sea seems to have been cut off the mountain. Shikamaru concludes that it had to be some sort of ninjutsu, as it doesn't look natural at all. Something that dislodged a large rock from the mountain, causing a massive landslide. Hinata then spots someone far away. There seems to be one person up ahead in the mountain. It seems like he's heading towards the village. We cut back to one of the younger male ninjas from the stone village, walking through the forest, as he mumbles, Oh, now we have to fight stupid Konoha 
Kata kids. Three shuriken are shot at him from the woods as he blocks them with a short katana he uses. Hinata comes out of the rocks nearby with the Byakugan activated and starts to assault him with her gentle fist. He evades the attacks using earth style mud wall as Hinata breaks the wall with her fists. The stone ninja then counters her with a nerf style protection around his skin but Sasuke appears as he's about to counterattack Hinata and blocks his punch with a Sharingan activated. Uchiha and Hyuga assault the stone ninja together who is now on the defensive. Sasuke uses a fireball that the stone ninja blocks using another stone wall which is destroyed. We see Sasuke taking a close look at the stone ninja as he uses the wall. And the stone ninja says, you damn kids, you pay for that, you'll see. He weaves hand signs and sticks his hands to the ground, which starts to shake and says, I'm done with you. It seems like he is preparing a massive jutsu to counterattack as earth spikes sprout out of the ground aiming towards Hinata and Sasuke. We cut back to Naruto who is still butthurt about Sasuke having defeated him and pissed at Kiba who is nearby with Choji. An old lady drops to the ground right next to Naruto as she slips on the mud. Naruto rushes to help her as he kneels down he is stabbed in the gut by the old lady who pulled a kunai out of her sleeve. Naruto pulls back bleeding but the lady rushes towards him. Choji and Kiba rush to counterattack the old lady. Kiba using his fang over fang, Choji his limb enlargement. Naruto, even though wounded, uses the shadow clone jutsu to attack the lady as well. The three Konoha ninjas engage in a taijutsu bout with the lady, who is one of the stone ninjas undercover. We cut to Sakura and Ino, who are in the middle of an argument about which of them deserve Sasuke better. They are very close to each other, almost coming to blows. Shino is nearby, just observing. They suddenly hear sounds of battle coming from the distance and divert their attention. It seems like they hear Naruto, Kiba, and Choji engaging the old lady. As they look away, a male villager behind them, about 30 feet away, tosses a barrage of a dozen kunais imbued with chakra in the direction of the two kunoichis. As the kunais are about to hit and kill the two, a wall of bugs forms and blocks the kunais. As we see Shino preparing for battle, the male villager, who is a stone ninja disguised as well, says, it seems at least one of you didn't lower your guard. Hard. Sakura and Ino both draw kunais and stand ready to battle the male villager who starts to weave hand signs. With this we have three cores of heroes fighting and each three man team has one ninja from every jonin squad. So I try to pair up some interesting Konoha combinations to fight together, something we never saw in the original. We cut back to Sasuke and Hinata and we see massive spikes coming from the ground. It seems like the stone ninja is going to shoot those at them. The stone ninja says, let's see if you can dodge my earth spikes, little punks, and as he motions to release them and shoot them towards Sasuke and Hinata, we hear a familiar sound of the shadow possession jutsu as the stone ninja ceases to move. Shikamaru steps out of the woods, his shadow linked to the stone ninja's shadow, and says, now we may have some questions for you as the stone ninja looks very desperate as his body cannot move on his own. We cut back to Naruto, Choji and Kiba as they are still engaged with the old lady in taijutsu. She uses very proficient taijutsu, we can see wisps of chakra flowing outside of her body implying a nymph to her physical abilities. She easily counters fang over fang in Choji's expansion jutsu. Naruto is bleeding quite a lot from his stomach but he still goes with a shadow clone jutsu as they are quickly defeated by the enemy's superior taijutsu. Naruto is definitely not in the best shape because of the injury he took to his gut. We cut to Sakura, Ino and Shino as the ninja they are facing finishes weaving hand signs and the ground around the Konoha ninjas turn into liquid as they start to sink, unable to move. Shino sends in insects but the stone ninja disappears. Sakura, after quickly analyzing the situation, suddenly has a realization and says, it's genjutsu! She then releases the genjutsu and turns the ground back into normal, the stone ninja back in view. However, when she does so, more chakra infused kunais fly towards the three Konoha ninjas and Shino once again reacts, blocking the three kunais with a wall of bugs. The stone ninja in disguise says, come on children, let's play, come, as he falls back. 
We cut back to Shikamaru questioning the stone shinobi caught on his shadow possession. What is your purpose here? Why did you attack the village? I'll never say, he replies, as Sasuke steps forward and draws a kunai close to his neck. Look at your situation and think carefully if you really don't want to talk, he says. Hinata then says, alarmed, Sasuke-kun, there's another one approaching, as she points to the direction of the mountain forest. Sasuke and Hinata move in front of the captured stone ninja, blocking him from the incoming reinforcements. As Kurotsuchi comes out of the woods, she did not try to sneak up on them and seems rather amused with the situation her comrade is in as she says it seems you caught my stupid friend let him go and we can call it quits i'm afraid we can't do that sasuke says cold as usual thought so kurotsuchi says as she weaves hand signs and uses magma style to attack kurotsuchi knows magma style so i am gonna do this but in this rewrite her magma style looks like you know magma instead of that weird glue like sub Substance Kurutsuchi and Mei use in the war arc, which looks just so whack. Let's make it look like magma. It looks very nice. It's the first time we see magma style, so it should look cool too, and it should look menacing. Like Sasuke, Hinata, and Shikamaru are screwed. And as this wave of lava threatens to engulf the three of them, we cut back to Naruto fighting alongside Choji and Kiba, and they are being clobbered by the old lady. We can see Naruto and Kiba bumping heads and not helping each other out during the fight because Naruto just hates Kiba's guts and vice versa. As they keep taking kicks and punches, Kiba blames Naruto for getting in his way and Naruto just screams back at him saying he is injured and he was caught off guard. We see that the three Konoha ninjas are completely outmatched and they are already very beaten up by the stone ninja using taijutsu disguised as an old lady. We cut back to Sakura, Ino and Shino as their opponent falls back to prepare another genjutsu. Sakura says, however, we have to get out of his range, quickly. Chino says, let's gather with the others, use strength in numbers. The three of them run towards Naruto's position where they heard battle noises before, as the Genjutsu stone ninja seems frustrated they didn't take his bait, but he gives chase. We now see Choji laying on the ground, barely able to stand up. We also see the old lady holding Kiba by his throat, about to kill him. And this is a good moment to show Naruto will risk his life, even to protect protect people that treated him badly, as he's going to try and rescue Kiba. Naruto throws a smoke bomb on the ground, right where the old lady was holding Kiba, as she says, oh, these types of tricks won't work on me, boy. She exits the smoke, holding Kiba by the throat, and we see Naruto going for a punch that is easily countered, as he takes another punch to the gut, who's already wounded. Naruto falls to the ground as he tosses a kunai towards the stone ninja, but he misses above his head, and the the old lady says, that's poor aim, boy. The kunai then transforms into one of Naruto's clones over her head, landing a kick swinging from above at the back of her neck. Naruto says, I was not for your head. The stone ninja drops concentration and reverts back to his normal form, losing the old lady transformation. We can see he was the older ninja, the leader of the squad. Naruto's clone manages to snatch Kiba away, who's unconscious from being choked, but the older ninja is pissed off and rushes to the real Naruto, lending a nasty flurry of taijutsu, opening gashes on Naruto's face and saying, you Konoha brats really are stubborn. Naruto tries to counter the taijutsu with the techniques Kakashi taught him prior to the mission, but the enemy is much more experienced and he has the ability to improve his physical capabilities with chakra. Naruto tries to use the shadow clones, forming the hand seal, but the old ninja just kicks his hands, not letting him form the seal and create the clones. As the stone ninja is about to finish Naruto off, a swarm of beetles suddenly attack his hand, forcing him to pull back. We see Shino, Sakura, and Inu, with their pursuer in tail, arriving. The pursuer screams, Captain, they know how to counter Genjutsu! I think your abilities will be more efficient! Inu helps Choji up, as he seems to be a bit recovered and will try to fight. Kiba is still unconscious, and the group is surrounded by two way more experienced ninjas. We cut back to Kurotsuchi, and we can see her massive magma style attack about to hit Sasuke, Hinata, and Shikamaru. Sasuke then uses his Sharingan ability, weaving hand signs and creating a mud wall that he just copied from the first stone ninja they engaged. The lava impacts the mud wall and quickly destroys it, but the wall buys the Konoha ninjas a split second that they use to escape the magma attack. 
Shikamaru is forced to undo the possession on the male ninja as the three Ganons regroup. Shikamaru says, This girl's bad news. She knows a Keke Genkai. We have to get out of here. The male stone ninja looks at Kurutsuchi and says, You could have hit me with that lava. But I didn't, she replies. Now let's focus on our opponents. She looks at Sasuke and says, You're kinda cute. I'm Kurutsuchi. What's your name? Sasuke Uchiha, he replies, narrowing his eyes in that cool, chilly way of his. The male ninja says, That's enough. Let's take them down. Kurutsuchi stops him abruptly, holding his shoulder and says, They're not common Ganon. We are fighting in Uchiha, and I think that one's a Hyuga. She points to Hinata. We have to approach them more carefully. The male ninja snaps at Kurutsuchi and says, Just because you're the granddaughter of the Tsuchikage, it doesn't mean you can give me orders. And he rushes towards the three Ganons. Sasuke quickly launches a fireball towards him that he blocks with a stone wall. As the fireball impacts, it creates a lot of smoke and debris obscuring the view for a second. After the smoke clears, Shikamaru says, Engage him closely! The girl can't attack with her magma if we're close to him, or she'll hit him! Sasuke and Hinata then rush forward as the smoke clears to engage the male stone ninja. Shikamaru uses his shadow possession, which trails behind the two Konoha ninjas. Kurtsuchi uses a water-style attack with more precision than her lava style, because she has water style too, and Sasuke and Hinata don't the water bullets she shot at them. They engage the stone ninja who was unable to weave hand size in time to parry or block their attacks and he starts to get pounded. Kurutsuchi, frustrated with her companion's bashfulness, has no choice but to also engage them in melee. So Sasuke Hinata and Shikamaru's shadow are assaulting Kurutsuchi and the male stone ninja and after this lengthy taijutsu exchange where Shikamaru is unable to capture the two of them in his shadow, Kurutsuchi thinks better and launches a magma style attack against Shikamaru who's standing further away and her own ally wouldn't be in the way of the attack. We see Shikamaru opening his eyes wide as this massive amount of magma is about to hit him square on. We see Shikamaru's terror as he is engulfed by magma screaming in agony. The screaming ceases. We cut to the remaining six Konoha ninjas, which are fighting the remaining two stone ninjas, and they are not doing very good. Sakura attempts her basic genjutsu on them, but their enemy genjutsu user counters it effortlessly. Ino says she can't use her jutsu without Shikamaru because it's too risky, and Naruto is very hurt but still trying to fight to no avail, just getting pounded even more by the enemy. Choji is not doing so hot either as the enemy genjutsu catches and immobilizes him and Sakura tries to break him out but as she tries to do so the older ninja blitzes her and goes for a punch to her side a very powerful punch that's probably gonna knock her out. She is saved by Naruto who gets in front of the punch and takes it for her, Naruto then dropping unconscious. Shino comes in for the rescue using his bugs to protect his friends but they are on the defensive. It's easy to see that at this point Shino is carrying the battle and you see his bugs are able to suck a decent amount of chakra from the two enemies. However, with two men down, Konoha is very much on the defensive and the older ninja says, if you leave this village right right now and don't return, we can stop this fight and no one needs to get hurt anymore. Sakura, looking at the state of her team, considers his offer, but then she looks at Naruto, laying on the ground unconscious, and a flash of him saying that he won't give up passes through her mind. Her gaze burns and she says, we won't abandon the people of this village. As the fight in the village wrecked by the landslide happened, most of the people standing by, the villagers just ran away at the sight of fight. But as Sakura says that and readies herself to resist the attackers, the villagers that were observing at a distance, that were helped by her and the other leaf ninjas during those days they stayed there, begin to gain some courage. Some of them grab torches, pitchforks, and other improvised weapons as the fight between the stone ninjas and the Konoha ninjas restarts. Shikamaru is dead, killed by Kurotsuchi's lava style. She says, Have you had enough? Sasuke simply says, We have only begun. Gun. Both Kurutsuchi and her male friend are paralyzed. Shikamaru comes out of a nearby alcove and says, Yeah, I guess it worked. Kurutsuchi says, How? We cut back to a flashback of the moment when Sasuke launched a fireball on the male ninja's mud wall, creating a lot of 
ash and dust right after the male ninja rushed towards them and obscured the battlefield. We see Shikamaru saying in that moment of opportunity when they cannot be seen, I'll be the bait, but you have to engage them close. Sasuke says, very well, and we see Sasuke using an illusion genjutsu, creating a copy of Shikamaru. We see that Sasuke copied the base genjutsu Kakashi taught Sakura while he was watching her during their training montage. The real Shikamaru then hides, and the illusion Shikamaru created the shadow who trailed behind Hinata and Sasuke when they were engaging the stone ninja in melee. So essentially Konoha's plan here was to obscure the view of the stone ninja so they could use the genjutsu in order to bait Kurutsuchi when she realizes attacking Shikamaru would be the better option, leaving them open from a shadow possession attack coming from the actual Shikamaru hitting in a stone alcove. Sasuke says, you lowered your guard, you didn't expect a genjutsu of such low level to be effective, but it was your mistake, as both Kurutsuchi and the male stone ninja are paralyzed. We cut back to the village. The leaf ninjas are being absolutely overwhelmed, as a mob of villagers rushes towards their aid with improvised weapons. The two stone ninjas attack some of them, but the older shinobi says, don't kill the civilians! Naruto wakes up, bleeding, and as he sees the civilians join in the fight, he also rushes in. Even with all those villagers helping the Konoha ninjas, they are absolute fodder and the villagers are taken out very quickly, but there are too many of them and they seem to be slowly but surely overwhelming these stone ninjas. However, as the mob of people doesn't stop coming their way, saying that they will protect their home, the older ninja weaves hand signs and produces a jutsu that booms his voice so everyone at a very long distance can hear him. He says, Attention, people of the country of crystals, the land of earth demands that you surrender immediately and relinquish the help of the leaf village. The stone village will take care of matters now and ensure the safety of your people. This insurrection is useless, but rest assured that Tsuchikage only wishes to help you. We'll give you 24 hours. If you don't surrender unconditionally to the land of earth until then, another landslide will hit your city. One much more devastating this time. The older man and his companion then rush off, getting away from the angry mob and the Konoha ninjas, heading back to their hideout. We cut back to Sasuke, Hinata and Shikamaru. They hear the speech delivered by the older stone ninja with his booming voice even though they're very far away in the mountains. Sasuke says, We'll see what this guy has to say when he learns we have the granddaughter of the Tsuchikage in our hands. As he stares at an immobilized Kurutsuchi, Hinata, do it. Hinata then uses her taijutsu, hitting the male stone ninja chakra point with her gentle fist, rendering him absolutely useless in ninjutsu combat. And goes to do the same to Kurutsuchi. She's about to strike her, but then Kurutsuchi says, Well, you are not the only one readying a little surprise as an 8 feet tall stone golem erupts from the ground under Shikamaru, punching him extremely hard, undoing the possession jutsu. Kurutsuchi evades Hinata's attacks and grabs her wounded ally as Sasuke uses phoenix flames to attack and destroy the golem with pinpoint accuracy as he was about to strike Shikamaru down. Kurutsuchi stares at the golem destroyed by Sasuke and says, oh well, it couldn't be too durable or her Byakugan would spot it, even underground, but it did its job. Hinata says, it probably blended with the rocks underneath. I'm sorry, I couldn't spot it. Shikamaru, spitting blood, says, so you did it at the same time as we laid our little trap then. Kurutsuchi says, indeed, you're very perceptive. We have a brief flashback of the moment when Sasuke used the fireball on the male ninja's stone wall, creating the smoke and ash, and then we see Kurutsuchi using her stone golem jutsu and commanding it to hide underground. Kurutsuchi says, it appears our cap Captain has changed plans suddenly as she carries her companion wounded by Hinata's gentle fist. Well, let's call it a draw for today, as Sasuke does the same to a wounded Shikamaru. Kurutsuchi then says, fighting you all was fun, as she wings to Sasuke and jumps off to the distance. Sasuke and Hinata help Shikamaru as they head back down to the village, and as they reach the town we can see that the villagers look at Sasuke with fear and hatred like never before, but he ignores them and goes to check up on the others. Naruto is by far the most hurt of them all, and we can see 
Kiba woke up by this point. As Hinata sees Naruto's bad wounds, she reaches for her healing salve that she gave Naruto in the original in the tuning exams, but this time she applies it to Naruto's wounds herself as she blushes furiously. Now our heroes are hurt at their lowest point in the arc and they have 24 hours to save the town without external help as they have a time limit. This arc will be resolved in part 3 of the rewrite, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. If you want to support the series, well, this video was a lot of work, please like the video, it doesn't take you too long, and comment below what did you think about this arc that I came up with. Would you have done something different? Did I miss anything? Stay tuned for part 3 and thanks for watching.